uh, thank you to Gerald Pollard for giving me the, this opportunity to talk with you and uh, present very new and strange results. Uh, physical chemical per, uh, properties of uh, perturbed water. This is the, the theme of uh, my uh, relation. And uh, this presentation will illustrate three different methods to perturbate water that all produce very similar systems with quite peculiar properties. The method R, the production of EDS, extremely diluted solutions, obtaining the truth an iterative process of successive dilutions and agitation, the method of homeopathic medicine. Iteratively filtered water obtained through an, iter an iterative process of successive filtrations through sintered glass filters and iteratively nationalized water obtained through an iterative process of successive drying and the wetting of the, na the nafium polymer. All of us know the protocol of homeopathic medicine. It is clear from the protocol you see in the diapositive that after several centesimal dilution, the active principle vanishes from the solution. But I wish to underline that when using water as solvent is a methodological mistake to do not consider the possible variation of a supramolecular structure of water. What happens to the water, to the solvent? I'll show some new findings. In the next three slides uh, are pre represented the experimental data of pH, hetero mixing with alkaline solutions, and electrical conductivity. In each slide is also shown in red the contribution due to the impurities released from the glass which are, all, are always much lower than the experimental one, as you can see in this slide, but um, the same happens from the head of mixing with alkaline solutions. You see that the red line that uh, represents the contribution of chemical impurity is uh, lower than the experimental one, but uh, um, electrical conductivity data allow a more detailed discussion. Let's consider an experimental point uh, from the graph. Why this system cannot <laughs> work? <laughs> okay, um, see uh, at the higher uh, uh, point in the graph. There is in, in the ordinate there is the uh, electrical conductivity, about uh, 22 uh, microsiemens to centimeters to man, minus one. And on the abscissa, you have the concentration of chemical impurity. All these data are measured in, are in for all these uh, samples, we measure the electrical conductivity and made a chemical analysis of the uh, uh, component of the glass in which the, the solution were contained. And uh, in the case of the point at 22 uh, microsiemens, the contribution, the, thank you, the, con yeah, the contribution of chemical impurity is 8 to, uh, to the minus 5 mole per liter, and the, this quantity of impurity gives this conductivity. So in this case, the, the more striking, there is about uh, three, uh, three uh, uh, times uh, lower the contribution of the impurity as respect to the, um, the sample. And for all the system, uh, this happens. So, we are faced with a mystery. What determines an increase of the electrical conductivity comparable to that of the chemical composition Well, this animation, no, sorry. Uh, okay, 
don't, don't, don't start, but this one. Uh, we have uh, tried to explain the enigma of a liquid symbol whose conductivity is not due to only to its chemical composition. Our work hypothesis implies the presence of aqueous nanostructures in the liquid. Water aggregates. In a simplified hypothesis of a linear aggregate of water molecules, the mobility of the protein is highly increased, as you can see from the animation, because if, he, if he, there is present um, a single molecule, this is the um, distance in the, in the, in the in a time. But if it's a, sing, a, a aggregate, linear aggregate of water molecule, in the same time, the, uh, the space uh, of the proton is very large. So, if they are present in solution, molecular aggregate, the, this me uh, hopping mechanism is able to explain the increase of conducibility due to the increase of mobility of the uh, protons as respect to uh, the chemical compounds. Well, are present these aggregates in the HDS solution? A very simple way to verify, at least partially, the hypothesis of present molecular aggregates of water is the gravimetric method. We May, you may, we may use of a balance, uh, analytical balance. We evaporate a no quantity of the EDS at 19 centigrade for 34, 48 hours. When then compare the obtained quantity of solid with the expected one given to the chemical composition of the liquid obtained via analytical measurements atomic absorption and ICP mass. We ob systematically obtain uh, um, that experimental results, results are higher than the expected one, from, up to, from two up to four times higher. On the contrary, when using the, core, the control solution, it has the water that has contained the glass, glass powder for several months, we obtain the expected quantity of the solid. I show you. Uh, we, we, we take this um, solution that have a conducibility 100 uh, microsiemens centimeter to, menu, to minus one. Made a an chemical analysis, and the quantity of, of solid that must deposit is uh, 0 0.9. But when you when uh, we uh, made the, the, the evaporation of the EDS, we have 2.3 milligrams of solid, and so on. And this is a systematic result. Uh, when you use uh, uh, the control, that is a uh, solution uh, that is uh, in contact with uh, uh, glass powder, the same glass of the container, uh, you, you obtain this uh, results. The, uh, we made, uh, take this, uh, this liquid, made the analysis, the chemical analysis, and we expected 3.1 milligram. And the experimental one is 3.1, and so on. So, as, uh, and here we show you uh, the, uh, the, the quantity of solid deposit uh, uh, in the vials when we made the experiment. And uh, as you can see, the amount of deposited solid is really high and its appearance is not of components of pyrus glass. It is not powder, it is not salts. It seems that he, there is a new component, it seems. The two new phenomena are observed in this field of research the volume effect and the aging effect. Uh, the volume effect is described in this slide that reports the conductivity of samples versus the volume of the solution at the age of 500 days. The smaller the volume, the higher the conductivity, regardless of the dilution degree or the nature of active principle. 
Annika Montana in this case. The trend of the increase is an exponential one. This uh, um, result uh, permits us to have results that are very far from experimental error. If you age for a long time in small volume of this EDS solution, you have a thermodynamic parameter that change very, very much. This figure represents the behavior of a sample that is aged for several months with, with a large volume, 200 milliliter, the red line. Uh, and it is, and then, is, and is then subdivided in different smaller volume that are 10 milliliters, the blue, five milliliters, the red, the green, and three milliliters, the, the, the red. The presence of a rising and then decreasing trend with age strongly indicates that these solutions, chemical pure water, are far from equilibrium system. They don't, do not tend to reach an equilibrium. They are described by the, by the thermodynamics of reversible process, as studied by the Nobel laureate Ilya Prigozhin, who postulate the formation of dissipative structures. Here, the author reports a unique feature of the EDS, associated with the nature of far from equilibrium systems, their ability to dissipate energy from the environment. Note the sequence of maxima and the minima and the average increase in, conducti in conductivity with increase the age of the, sum the sample. Uh, the, uh, you can see that the increase is very large because yeah, we, we report the excess increase uh, that is that, uh, of conductivity, that, that is the, conduct, the experimental ductivity subtracted from chemical contribution to the conductivity. And you can see that uh, there is a periodical a, a, a trend that in, in the average tend to increase. The, this is a surely a far from equilibrium system with dissipative structures and do not tend to an equilibrium. Surprising, even the simple spectroscopic methodology in the ultraviolet is able to highlight the variation of supermolecular structures of uh, uh, solvent water. Our experimental data uh, can, uh, can thus be added to the already large body of experimental results that show the differences of the physical chemical properties of the EDS relative to the solvent one, uh, water, to which homeopathic dilution, pure solvent, pure water, are assimilated. And here, uh, the slide shows the ultraviolet visible spectra of three of our EDS samples obtained using pure water as solvent, two samples of Arnica Montana and one of Dasperin. Despite the, the very different protocol used in preparation of the samples, the maximum of the assorbents are in the same range of wavelength. And also in this case, the signal seems to depend on the value of electrical conductivity. The higher the conductivity, the higher the absorbance. Yeah, uh, you see that there is a peak at about 277 uh, um, nanometer, the same of the heat zeta zone as absorption. Uh, in this slide, we show the same spectroscopic results uh, uh, in the range of uh, 270 and 300 nanometer for two kinds of perturbed water. At, uh, Iteratively nationalized the water and iteratively filtered water that uh, really resembles, resembles the homeopathic one. This, it seems that uh, the three different methods of perturbed water uh, give the same uh, results in, uh, in general with some peculiarity uh, I, that I will show you uh, now. Uh, this result confirms the idea, the idea that water is the main contributor to the physical chemical parameters measured. Very different protocols to obtain perturbed water give very similar results with some peculiarity. Okay, 
uh, I think that there's no time. The, uh, only I show you the, the head-made system to obtain uh, the attilatively filtered water. The attilatively filter process of a given volume, 10 to 30 milliliter of two, uh, twice distilled water, simply consists in filtering the liquid in the vacuum and getting the filtrate and passing it in a, in a successive filtration step. This photograph uh, shows the experimental apparatus in my laboratory. Okay, mm, okay. Now, this is a more, more significant. significant. Nafion membrane with a surface of 60, uh, 120 square centimeter were placed in a petri capsule of polystyrene in contact with uh, 10, 50 milliliter of pure water. Manual agitation is performed repeatedly so that the liquid laps against the membrane. The membrane is then removed from the contact of the liquid. And then we follow the evolution of electrical conductivity that systematically increase. Here we show the, an extraordinary variation of pH up to about three units, three order of magnitude in the uh, concentration of age plus uh, ion. And the linear, really very good correlation between the pH and the logarithmic, the logarithm of electrical conductivity, as we see uh, when we the, uh, 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 as if we were dealing with a chemical acid, but there is no chemical acid, only pure water and contact with nephion. That is a very insoluble uh, polymer and cannot uh, leave any substances. Well, now made a, a strange operation, but fortunately, very, very interesting. The liquid samples obtained using the three different, different perturbation methods of water, HDS, iteratively filtered water, water and iteratively nafinated water, are deprived of bulky water using a lyophilization process. We put in a in a glass container under uh, uh, the temperature of uh, solid nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, and under vacuum, we subtract the water. Okay, you must, you cannot expect a solid after this operation. Um, three different solid residual obtained, a few milligrams of a liter of starting solution. All the three different uh, method uh, conduce to uh, a solid. This solid are mixed with solid sodium chloride and subject to high pressure with a press. This is the standard procedure to perform IR spectroscopy in solid state. Now I show you the. Okay, this photo show <laughs> also Roberto uh, uh, showed the deposit found after lyophilization of iteratively nafinized water, uh, one of the most striking examples in terms of quantity of solid. Uh, the, the, the quantity of solid obtained is, is not reproducible, depends on there are uh, system far from equilibrium. They are intrinsically not reproducible. Well, uh, here we show you the higher spectra of solid residues of uh, uh, iteratively nafinized water, dotted line, iteratively filtered water, dashed line, uh, and liquid water, solid line, at room temperature. They are very similar. They suggest, this suggests the idea of a solid water. The main differences are the overall red shift of the broad OH stretching peak and the appearance of an adsorption line at around 29050 cm to the minus one, the one of the stretching of uh, uh, ice at uh, zero centigrade. So th there is some indication that this is a solid. Oh, okay, um, many, many simili similitudes with uh, the three methods and some differences 
uh, ex uh, really in the uh, bending of the OH uh, that are very different, but in the stretching uh, bend, uh, the similitude are uh, really, and the red shift is clear because uh, something is uh, modified in, the, in this water, in this solid, sorry, like, so, like solid substances. Well, atomic force microscopy is a microscopic, uh, how many times? Uh, uh, is a, um, uh, a microscopy that uh, was made uh, very simple. With this technique, a, new, a few drops of the liquid sample are evaporated on surface of mica, leaving a solid residual in green at the bottom. The movement of the micro lever in blue at the bottom on the surface of the residual, the determine a deflection of the laser light. In red, this is recorded. In practice, we obtained a homography of the solid object, and I show you the results. This was uh, uh, the result from uh, the, uh, this technique on the residual of iteratively inaffinated water, and um, note the length of um, the length of uh, the, this uh, white point determined the uh, height of the aggregates. In this case, we have about 400 nanometer. In, in comparing with the, the, the control, 40 nanometer. Mm. Uh, this sample was filtered water, uh, 140 nanometer for iteratively filtered water. And respect to control glass powder, glass powder uh, in contact with water, about uh, 30 nanometer. And for uh, in head ADS, 56 nanometer, and compared with the control 29. So there are some, some similitude, but some peculiarities, because uh, the quantity and the dimension of the hypothesized nanometer um, aggregate is obtained. Uh, a very similar Im image from literature relative to uh, chlorodium chloride uh, uh, EDS is um, uh, obtained by, by soon, soon by law in uh, 29, uh, one, well, 2009. In this technique, uh, uh, nanospheres of polystyrene socketed in fluorescein are inserted in the sample. The sample with the nanospheres is then illuminated using UV light, and finally, using optical microscopy, we obtain the following, for me, uh, very, very uh, nice uh, images. This is a remarkable clear image of an aggregate is visible in the liquid phase. And this is an iteratively nationated water aggregate. Obviously, not all the aggregates are so big. Uh, I, I, I show you the striking of the one. Well, molecular aggregate in the liquid phase can be seen. For the first time, type in the, our work hypothesis give a clear confirmation. This was the aggregate of an ADS, uh, aspirin, and this was the image of an uh, aggregate due to iteratively filtered water. Well, now we have a solid. What is chemical composition of this, of this solid? This is the very great mystery. We use a thermogravimetric, thermogravimetric method. I'll, I describe it very briefly because, because not all know this. Thermogravimetry is a method of an analysis in which the product is continuous record of changes in the mass of the sample in a controlled atmosphere and as a function of temperature or time. The result of the analysis is usually expressed with a thermogravimetric curve. It shows on the abscess of the temperature of the time and on the ordinate the variation of mass in an absolute value of per or percentage. This chart is also defined a, a curve of thermal decomposition. Okay. This was a thermo two thermogravimetric curve of the solid residual of an, an iteratively nationalized water and of an ADS. 
um, it can be seen that the iteratively national the curve goes to zero when the temperature when the temperature go uh, when the temperature give about nine, uh, 900 degree while the aspirin if the a similar uh, 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 trend but about the 50 percent of uh, the solid remains also this high temperature. It is good for us because uh, aspirin in EDS aspirin permain, uh, it was aged for a long time in glass container. Then he extract the glass. And about 50% of the, the weight when he described the gravimetric method is chemical. The after 50% is another thing. So we are in agreement for the first uh, uh, work of a gravimetric method because uh, remain some component of the glass, silica, uh, aluminum, um, boric acid, carbonate, and so on. While for a iteratively nationalized water as that cannot have chemical compo compound because their nature and the procedure of obtaining, obtaining this, uh, this was uh, the, the result. But in this, uh, we, are, we must be sure that there are, that there are not chemical components responsible of the uh, decrease of the mass uh, while the temperature are, are scanning from uh, uh, ambient temperature to about 1,000 uh, centigrade. Well, uh, this uh, slide shows the mass spectrometry of the solid after sublimation of an activity in high end water. Uh, in, in other words, we make the thermogradimetric measurements. And by a, a, a neutral gas, uh, we take the vapor of what uh, as obtained in the, in the thermal decomposition of the system and, uh, and systematically we record the mass in a, a, a atomic mass unit uh, of what is uh, uh, go out. Well, the only interesting for us uh, are this car and uh, perhaps this because the, the, all this, uh, the, this, this and this are gas. So, uh, gas in the, uh, they are contained in the, in the uh, uh, gas, noble gas that used for transport, the vapor on, on the, and we have this one whose atomic mass atomic is, is 80, the one of water. And this one, the mass atomic is about the one of H3O2. Huh? Okay. And this was more uh, unstable because about uh, uh, four, 400 degree is stopped to uh, exist, while another kind of water uh, resists uh, compare, uh, okay, the abundant substance from thermal decomposition with 80 mm, atomic mass units account for the total mass loss of the solid of iteratively refinated water. It is a new state of water. Thank you for, for the attention.